All right. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing very well on this Friday evening. Thank you for making time to be here with us. Welcome to the ICFA 2025 cohort expression of interest webinar. Uh, quickly, I'll just do the housekeeping rules, but please keep your microphone muted until the end. This session will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel, our LinkedIn, and the slides will also be shared with you. There will be a Q&A session uh, at the very end, but if you have any questions, please put them in the chat as we go, and they'll be answered immediately by Stefan and Morgana. Uh, some questions that you might ask might not already be in the application guide FAQ section at the back, so if they're not there, we'll add them and make sure to forward those on to everybody, including your teammates. Finally, I'll kindly ask you to Follow our LinkedIn uh, for your the latest updates on the International Climate Finance Accelerator. So today we'll be covering the ICFA program and the benefits, the selection timeline and selection process. Uh, a quick reminder to make sure you check the eligibility and selection criteria. Then we'll show you how to register on the platform, uh, how to submit your expression of interest and an overview of the application guide and what you can expect from the training hub. So just quickly about the International Climate Finance Accelerator. We're a public-private partnership uh, first launched by the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Environment, Climate and uh, Biodiversity. Uh, now we also have a, a new governmental partner, so the Luxembourg Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we also have uh, partners in the private sector, so the big four, lawyers, uh, some other service providers, and we're also in collaboration with the European Investment Bank and Sperkey's, the Luxembourg National Savings Bank. On our team, we have uh, two teams actually, because we have our new initiative, which is Accelerating Impact. I'll maybe let our CEO, Stefan Peters, give a quick word about that. Thank you, Jacobs. Um, so the the ICFA itself has been set up in 2018 and have been has been running the program now for these many years. A uh, total of fund managers supported is 39. Building on that success, um, we now have uh, further support from the Luxembourg government to expand and launch a new program, which will be focused more on the social finance uh, side of things, uh, but very similarly structured as the climate finance program as it is. Uh, we'll be launching that uh, after the climate program. So the window, our window for an expression of interest is open now for the climate side. The one for the social finance program will actually start towards the beginning of January. So if you are more interested in that one, please stay, uh, stay here, uh, listen in. You get a lot of information that will be very similar to that program as well. But keep in mind that the deadlines will be a bit more later than that. Take us. And uh, maybe just a quick introduction from Morgana, who is uh, will be running uh, the ICFA program with uh, your cohort. Yes, hi everybody. Um, yes, I've joined the ICFA just recently as the program manager for the ICFA. Um, and yeah, looking forward to getting to see all of your expressions of interest. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Morgana. And I will be your uh, host today for this webinar, Jakob Svignauts or Jacob. So uh, what is the vision, uh, the mission and objectives of the ICFA? So our vision is to uh, have a sustainable world where people and planet thrive in prosperity through partnerships and impact finance. Our mission is to advance impact finance by empowering impact finance leaders of tomorrow. And our three objectives are to boost and support emerging fund managers who specialize in climate or social finance, to increase the number of impact investment funds and the assets invested into climate action or social impact, and finally, to incentivize and support fund managers to adopt impact finance. Who do we target? Investment managers or advisors launching their first or second vehicle, preferably an impact fund, who are seeking to scale and innovate high impact solutions with a developed and tested investment strategy in climate action or social finance. In the climate program, 
we specifically focus on climate change mitigation or climate change adaptation? Our pillars of support are divided into two. So we have the technical support and financial support. On the technical support side, you can expect uh, training workshops provided by our private partners. There's three levels uh, in those workshops, which we'll explain later. Our communities of practice, where we engage with past and new fund managers part of our program, uh, where we can discuss the challenges that they've been through, what they've done wrong, what they've done right, what they would do differently. We have a pool of about 80 expert coaches who will uh, guide you for one year um, through your fund management journey. And then we have event attendance and fundraising support. So we take you to conferences such as the Gin Impact Forum, our Impact Finance Forum here in Luxembourg, which had 650 attendees online and in person this year. And next week, we'll be going to COP29, where we'll host the Climate Dragons Den session with five fund managers by our program and with four DFIs on the panel. And then also we have our Knowledge Hub, consisting of trainings, templates, publications, guidelines, uh, peer learning sessions, et cetera. And on the financial support side, we have a support services envelope of 80,000 euros uh, made available to you immediately once you are selected. Um, this can be used with our partners at a discounted rate, but also uh, with external service providers if your needs aren't met. This is uh, to be repaid uh, half uh, after your first close, six months after your first close, and the other half six months after that. And then also you uh, have access to a working capital loan of 200,000 euros backed by state guarantee uh, here in Luxembourg. And that's also to be repaid. Uh, however, there is a four year period at the beginning where you don't have to repay it. So what are the benefits of the program? Well, first you get credibility by being selected by a recognized team of public and private experts. Uh, and also you'll get uh, the knowledge and expertise of the Luxembourg impact finance ecosystem. Uh, Luxembourg is the second biggest fund center in the world and one of the leaders in uh, impact finance. You'll get visibility by being featured in uh, impact finance media, presented at events and just in general through our program. You'll have access to community, so the ICFA fund managers, our network um, and everything else that comes with it. On financial leverage, you'll have access to the working capital loan, a network of uh, potential funders and fundraising support. So how long is the program? How long can you expect to receive uh, support from the ICFA team? Um, so once you're selected, uh, you'll have hopefully three years to your fund launch uh, and formal support will end at the end of year four. However, we'll still do catch up calls with you maybe every quarter or half a year. At the beginning, uh, while you're until you reach your first close, we'll have monthly progress calls where we'll discuss uh, the problems you're facing, if we can help you, if we can put you in contact with someone um, and anything else that might arise. Who has been through our program? So there's actually been 260 applicants since uh, 2018 and we have selected 39 through that period. Obviously not all of these are still active. Uh, 31 are still active, uh, including the ones that I've raised. They have raised uh, 450 million US dollars and uh, nearly 1 billion in, in commitments. The goal right now is uh, 4.5 billion uh, with the fund managers you see here that are still active. Great, so now we can move on to the section timeline and process. And just a reminder for everyone that joined before the beginning. Uh, if you have any questions, please just put them into the chat and we will answer them uh, immediately. So how does the timeline look? Well, the applications opened uh, at the beginning of October and they will close at the end of November. Actually, they'll go until the 1st of December. Um, until midnight because that's a Sunday. So please make sure that you are well aware of the requirements uh, for your application. Each year we have more and more applicants. Um, so last year, as an example, we had uh, 64 eligible applicants here in the first phase. Then in the second phase, 
we went down to, to 30. And in this third phase, we went down to 12. So it's quite a competitive program and it's uh, getting more competitive every year. So once you've submitted your expression of interest uh, at the end of November, we will review it until mid-December and then we will um, select a pool of eligible applicants to invite their draft, uh, to complete their draft application. At the same time, you also have access to our training portal um, which I will uh, expand on further. Then in uh, late January, you'll, it'll be the deadline to submit your draft application. And by mid-March, uh, after some interviews, shortlisted applicants will be confirmed. We'll have a virtual Q&A uh, training session with our partners before uh, final uh, applications are due mid-April. And then we'll have uh, interviews with our selection committee and this final section will be done in early July 2025. So how does the selection process look? At the eligibility section, it's performed by the ICFA team based on your expression of interest uh, application, uh, maybe some uh, meetings and calls we'll have. And the criteria is obviously you have to be an emerging fund manager, creating an impact fund, specifically investing in climate finance, and you're ready for acceleration. At the first application, uh, this will be performed by no, independent no, no, no. reviewers. Uh, and there will also be interviews at this stage. Here we'll review your investment strategy, impact strategy, team and fundraising capacity. At the final application assessment, this will be completed with our independent selection committee, which you can see on our website. Uh, again, we'll have interviews and this time also on your investment strategy, impact strategy, team and fundraising. Uh, this review will be a lot more stringent um, and more documentation will be required. Finally, once the selection committee makes a recommendation to the board, the board will have to review it and approve it. Stefan, anything you want to add or have I missed anything? Great. So now we'll cover the eligibility and selection criteria. Please head over to our website, icfa.eu forward slash program criteria. And here, have a read through the eligibility criteria and the selection criteria. If your project does not pass the eligibility criteria, you will also not pass and we will be forced to reject your application. So please, before you spend a significant amount of time preparing your application, submitting it, review and make sure that you uh, adhere to the eligibility criteria. If you're not sure, reach out to us on program at icfa.eu. How to register? Go to our website or slash apply for support. Click apply now. And here uh, you can register all of your teammates if you wish, uh, but only submit one application per team. Make sure you use the same application name and fund name, and this will allow you all to have access to the Knowledge Hub and to the Training Hub, and also complete your certificates um, of completion of the trainings that we'll have in the virtual recordings. So once you've uh, clicked register, you'll have to fill out the form, acknowledge the eligibility criteria. You'll click create an account, which will then result uh, in you receiving an email. Here you'll receive a very difficult password, which you can change on our portal. So head over to the icfa.lu forward slash member area or forward slash login, or in the header, click portal. And here you will have access to the ICFA portal. But as you can see here, you have application hub, event hub, knowledge hub, relationship hub, uh, procedures, and manage profile. So manage profile, you can change your password. Um, and as you progress through the program, you'll have access to more resources, such as templates, uh, contacts, uh, publications, et cetera. So how can you submit your expression of interest? Uh, because once you've registered, that doesn't mean that you are now eligible for the program. 
head over again to our member area and this time click on the application hub. Once you've opened the application hub, click access your application. This will then take you to uh, another domain where you'll be able to download the application guide, the fund presentation structure and key topics, the fund fact sheet, the organizational chart template, the market feasibility structure, a conflict of interest uh, disclosure form, a pipeline template, and a theory of change template. Please download all these documents, read through them uh, fully, especially the application guide. This will usually cover any of the questions you might have. So that covers the download part. Now we'll move on to the upload part. So obviously you'll have to upload your fund presentation, your fund fact sheet, your group structure, your company register extract, company articles and bylaws, your organizational chart, key person CVs, uh, your market feasibility study, corporate policies, CSR and IMM, your conflict, conflict of interest disclosure form, <laughs> pipeline of projects, uh, theory of change. So once you've uh, uploaded all these documents, you can click save and upload. And once again, please make sure that only one person from your team uh, uploads these. What is the application guide? Well, it's a 27 uh, page guide with uh, everything you need to know about the application process covered, uh, guidelines on how long your document should be, FAQs in the back. So please make sure to have a look um, through it. So the training hub. Once again, icfa.lu forward slash members area. And once you click on a training hub, you'll be able to see some past trainings. You'll be able to see some peer learning sessions. And you'll have access to the ICFA Academy. Access to the ICFA Academy will only be given to you when you are an eligible applicant. And you will have access to the Academy until about mid, mid June, end of June. So even if you're selected or you're not selected, you'll have access to our trainings covering marketing distribution, fund portfolio management, impact measurement and management, fund structuring, legal structuring, pitching, fund positioning, certification, uh, labels, etc. So even if you uh, aren't invited to submit your draft application, um, you can still benefit from the program. Um, so that's it on this webinar. Uh, I thank you very much for your time. We are opening the floor to questions. Okay, so we have some questions from Stuart. Are emerging solo GPs allowed to apply or only teams? Solo GPs are, of course, uh, allowed to apply. Uh, when you're in a team, it's uh, viewed more favorably, of course. But if you give a clear indication of your hiring timeline, when you expect uh, teams to, to join, or team members to join, what kind of functions will be filled, uh, this will help you in your um, selection process. I hope that answered your question, Stuart. Another question from Stuart. What is the fund structure that you require program members to have? Are you open to evergreen rolling funds? Is there a min fund size? Uh, we're open to any fund structures. It doesn't have to be in Luxembourg. Uh, it can be anywhere in the world. But you have to obviously consider uh, who your investors uh, are. What kind of structures are they OK with? Um, so we're open to any structure. And is there a minimum or uh, minimum size? There is no uh, minimum size. Uh, the smallest we have is 10 and the biggest we have is 500. Um, in our own selection and assessment on the fund size, uh, we look at viability levels more so than saying there is a minimum level. So depending on what jurisdiction you go for and what type of investment strategy to deploy, 
we would actually look at whether you can actually run your GP and fund advisory company with sufficient buffer, given the fund size that you are targeting and intending to raise. So keep that in mind that we actually assess you on the fund management operations that you do in the end. Uh, and that's more of a guiding line that we have for this. All right, now let's go with the old one, Stuart. You said again, given the timeline of the program, at which stage do you need to be uh, to qualify ideas, some investment traction syndications? So I think this is goes to the fact that we call ourselves an accelerator and not an incubator. Um, we are not set up to work with specific ideas and help you develop those ideas. We expect to see fund management teams with a credible idea that has already some type of traction, some proof of market, uh, some concepts that have actually been tested in those markets to make sure that we give you a push to get to setting up an institutional fund. If you're still at a very early stage, feel free to submit. We might still deem you eligible, but the likelihood of you actually being selected is going to be reduced because there's a lot of competition and we tend to favor the ones that we feel are the ones that we can really create more uh, added value to and getting them to the institutional fund level. Um, so maybe an addition to the submission as well, um, while we require, in the end of the day, we will sign with a company. We don't send, we don't sign with individuals. Um, so when we actually select a fund manager, we expect to see a company set up with the purpose of actually running and raising a fund. At this point in time, you might be still a bit early, but we actually want to see, especially with this early stage, is a very clear very um, developed draft of your articles and what you're going to be setting up. If you're not there at this stage, it will not be very, it takes time to set up a company and structure it and get the team involved. So you might actually be too early for support from our program. So keep that in mind as well, that by the end of this program, we really need a legal entity that we sign with. Okay, uh, we have a question. Uh, can you share more about fundraising support that the program provides? So obviously you're being first selected by a program that is highly competitive, so that is seen favorably in your advantage. We do have uh, some connections um, with DFIs. Um, uh, and we also attend events. So maybe you saw two weeks ago, we had the GPLP brunch where we had 16 of the ICFA support, supported fund managers and uh, 20 LPs um, intro today. So DFIs, family offices, foundations. We have the COP29 presentation, which also adds credibility. Um, maybe there isn't the most amount of investors there, but it's still a good opportunity for you to attend and have access to the blue zone. And we are continuously building out our network as we uh, expand our team and have more resources available. I hope that answers your question. How does the ICFA view unsuccessful past applicants applying with a new fund concept? We think that's great. You should apply. Do you expect the team to have fund management experience? Uh, I think it's definitely uh, uh, a benefit to have this experience. But if you don't have it, then you should have uh, a clear indication of how you will fill that gap in your application.
Um, so to the question that was posed by Sagar, how does ICFA view unsuccessful past applicants applying with a new fund concept? We encourage you. Um, in the end of the day, we have seen applicants come back with either an improved concept or a slightly different concept. Um, we, we are open to accepting that and reviewing that and putting it through the selection process with in mind that obviously if a previous concept have got, has gone through a selection process, we expect to see the feedback that we gave people, the training that we gave people access to, to be incorporated as well. So there is an element where we say, we'll judge you on the proposal that you put down right now. Uh, but if there's an improvement from a previous proposal, we'd like to see meaningful change uh, and meaningful improvement towards the, the gaps that we might have identified in the previous process. And to up his question, at what stage of the fund creation process do you look favorable upon? Um, we sit sort of in a sweet spot between um, the fund most likely not being created yet. Uh, maybe even the legal documentation is something we can also support fund managers with by paying part of the fees uh, as part of the support services envelope that Jake explained. Um, but at any point in time, anywhere between, say, you have a fund launched and you're starting your process very early on and you're just setting up your fund administration GP entity uh, is where we mostly play. So keep that in mind as well, that once you actually bring you on board, this is when a lot of the support that you can give people by paying for certain services like the legal, uh, the, the legal structuring, the tax advisory, uh, maybe a review of your IMM frameworks and other policies. These are elements that we can really work with you and, and fund partially in that process. All right, we have a question from David. Dear Stefan, can this legal entity submitting the application be an advisor, in brackets legal entity, that acts as a sponsor of the GPLP structure later? That's fairly normal to see that indeed. We, we would look to commercial company that will actually run a lot of the investment advisory business. So not bring a deal flow, structuring the terms, if you then, but that entity would then also be say, or that team would be the, the sponsor and the initiator of the fund, even though you might get a third party fund manager involved to, to do more the fund management, the compliance and risk function of that. Bit. So we're very open to the structures. We understand that there's also sometimes legal requirements depending on what fund regime you fit into. So um, we're okay and we're happy to discuss this as well to, to understand exactly what which entity you're looking to support with. Then the last question we had from Mr. Suresh, uh, how can two high impact ideas be applied at the same team? Can we split the team from the same legal entity and submit the application for two high impact ideas? Um, we can, you can submit two separate ideas. Um, I would advise that different people would be submitting and creating an application and an account to really split the communication flows. Having said that, normally at the end of the process, we will probably select only one. So if you want to submit and see what the traction is on each of these ideas and sound them out with us, we're happy to do that. But keep in mind that there is going to be, at some point, one of those ideas might actually drop out uh, purely by the different reviewers, the selection committee and the like uh, going through the process. But yes, you can essentially submit two ideas. So I believe that, that has answered all the questions so far. We're still available for questions. 
So if you have some, please don't be shy and put them in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll get back to you. Well, we'll, uh, we'll wait just one one last minute at, uh, at 2.34, we'll, we'll end the webinar. Uh, hello, we have a question from Vipin, um, founder of AGZO, an Indian startup in, in waste to health. Can you participate in the program? Um, if you're looking to set up a fund, yes. If you are a company, then unfortunately, no. Uh, we are an acceleration um, program solely focused on funds. And that is all of the questions answered. I want to take a moment to thank you all for giving us your precious time today. Thank you to Stefan and Morgana for also um, joining the webinar. And we will be sharing with you all of the questions and answers in an updated FAQ um, shortly. This session will be uh, posted on YouTube and on LinkedIn. We hope to see you all very soon. Thank you.